So for this first tutorial in Photoshop, I thought we'd take a look at how to make selections. So selections are one of the most important things we can do in Photoshop. It allows us to target specific areas within an image and adjust the properties within that selection. So we can either add to the image within just that selection, we can crop that selection out, or we can move that selection around. The selection tool is a tool that I use on a day-to-day -day basis as a graphic designer, and it's very handy. It does have a few limitations, but it is something to create a quick fix to uh, fix our images. So uh, just before we begin this video, um, do subscribe and like the video if you're interested in seeing more content and uh, leave a comment below and let me know if you'd like this video and if you'd like to see more of these videos in the future. So to find our selection tool, we uh, can go to our left hand toolbar here and it's actually marked as the marquee tool. Um, I use the name selection tool, you can use marquee tool if you prefer that and it just shows us there that it's called that. Um, so if you hold on the tool itself, then it comes up with these four different options. The rectangular marquee tool, which allows us to draw rectangles or squares. The circular one, or the elliptical marquee tool, which allows us to draw circles or ellipses. And then we also have the single row marquee tool and the single column marquee tool. I tend to use these two less, but they're there if you'd like to use them. And as you can see in the right hand corner here, we have the letter M. That basically notates the shortcut for this tool. So if I press M, it doesn't have to be an uppercase M. Uh, Any time, it'll bring me to this tool. But I'm just gonna press rectangular marquee tool because that's the one I want to use. And now I can go to my canvas and basically hold down and draw my rectangle out. So um, I can draw a rectangle or I can draw a square by holding shift and it will become a uniform square. I want to create a square, so I'm going to hold shift and do this and just let go. And there we have our selection. Um, so one of the things to immediately notice is that the selection looks like dashed lines that are moving. So anytime you see that, you know you've drawn a selection. Um, and as you can see, our cursor has changed the moment we hover over the selection. This basically means that we can move the selection around our canvas without changing our image. So I can just move this and reposition it to any position I would like. I'm just going to leave it here roughly in the middle um, and what we can do now is we can add to this selection. Um, I'm going to create a new layer and fill this selection in. So to create a new layer we go to the bottom right hand corner here and you can see on this panel we have a little plus sign and a little um, square. I'm going to press on that and you can see that a new layer has appeared on top of our background. So I'm going to try and stay nice and organized. Double click on the title and call it a rectangle. There we go. Um, and now we can fill this selection in on this layer. So uh, to do this, we can do it in several ways. We can use the paint bucket tool or the brush tool. I'm going to show you the brush tool to start off with. Um, so I've got the brush tool selected here. It's this one here, uh, as it shows here. Um, we can then select our color. So if we just go to this little panel here uh, and just choose a color that we like, I'll just go for a blue. Um, yeah, let's just leave it like that. And then what we can do is we can start to paint within our selection. So as you can see, we can start to paint and you'll notice that it fits um, perfectly within our selection. It doesn't spill over um, the selection we've made. It's nice and confined. Um, this can be quite a long, tedious process, especially if you have a very large um, selection. So I'm going to actually undo that by pressing command Z or that's control Z if you're on the uh, Windows computer. Um, or you can go to edit undo if that's easier um, you can then go to the paint bracket tool so that's a quicker way of filling in this entire selection in one go and just tap once and you can see it's now all blue so now we still have our selection though so what we can do to remove our selection and just be left with the image is we can press command D or control D which is the shortcut for Windows or we can go to select. Now this option here on the menu allows shows us all of the things we can do to our selection and press deselect. You can see is the command D which is the shortcut. And now you can see that that selection has gone and we're left with just the square. So um, now we've had a look at how to do that. Um, I'm going to now go back to our marquee tool and this time choose the elliptical marquee tool. Um, so one of the handy things that we can do we can fill in this selection like we just did or we can also subtract so I'm just going to draw another um, selection um, you can once again hold shift to make it just a circle but I'm going to choose a well, yeah let's go for a circle why not 
So we've got a circle here. Let's say I wanted to cut out this part of the selection. Well, all I'd have to do is press backspace on my keyboard and there we go, we've got it. And then remember Control D or Command D to remove the selection. And now we've left with this um, square that has a circular part cut out. Um, I'm gonna undo that because I don't wanna change my square. One of the other things we can do is we can go to our move tool, which is in the top left hand corner here, uh, shown here. And what we can do is we can actually move the selection. So what we can do is just drag this part that's selected and it will move everything within that selection to wherever we want to drag it to. Um, let's just move it here for now. Um, I'm not sure what I'm creating, but um, yeah, why not? So I'm gonna deselect that again. Um, so one of the next things we can do is if we go back to our marquee tool, you'll see that we have four different options here. So we have this first one, which is create a new selection. So this is what we've basically been doing this entire time. If I just quickly draw a selection, so I'll just draw a selection like this, and go to this next option, this is add to selection. So what we can do is we can actually draw and add to the selection that we've already made. Um, and as you can see, it will combine those two selections as one. And now if we go back to this first one, we can move this around just like our normal selection. This next option, so the third one along, is remove from selection. So um, unlike the add to selection, if I now drag and it intersects, it now actually cuts away from that selection. Uh, the only one where you can actually move the selection is on this first one, by the way. Um, and then the last one we have is intersect. So if I draw this and hover over, it's hard to explain this one, but basically it will take everything that I intersected between those two selections that we were drawing. And so we end up with this strange shape like this. I'm gonna once again deselect that because I don't want that shape. I'm gonna go back to the um, normal selection that I have here and I'm gonna to go to the rectangular marquee tool. So one of the last things um, that I want to show you is the feather. So what we can do is we can add a feather to the borders of our selection. So right now, if I make a selection and press backspace and just deselect with a command D, you can see that the outline has cut it very cleanly. There's no uh, gradient, there's no difference between, it's just a straight, sharp difference between the two colors. Um, if I undo that, and go to feather and change that to 20. So it's measured in pixels. If I now draw, you can see the selection's already changed. It's been kind of curved at the edges. If I now press backspace, it gives us this gradient, um, this kind of border that hasn't, isn't uh, clearly defined. Uh, and this can be very useful if we're on an image and we want there to be uh, no sharp edges between the two borders of two images or something like that. Um, one last thing to quickly show you on the uh, selection tool, if I just change that feather back to zero, make sure you do this before you make some really big selection and then realize that you actually have the feather on. I've done that loads of times and then you have to start all over again. Um, it's something that catches me out all of the time. If we draw the selection, what we can do is we can inverse the selection. So to inverse the selection, this basically means that everything's now at the moment selected within the square where we want to get everything that's selected outside of the square. So to do that, what we can do is we can go to select inverse, or as you can see, here's the shortcut shift command I, which is what I use. So command shift I. And now you can see that the, everything is selected on the other side. You can see that the selection comes all the way around the canvas. And if you're on a Windows, that shortcut was control shift I. And now if I deselect or backspace everything, you can see that everything's deleted outside of the square. Cool, so that was the selection tool in a nutshell. Uh, if you're interested in more of these videos, then do let me know in the comments below. Um, I hope this was useful. Um, and once again, with as with all of these tools that we learn, it's basically the more you use it, uh, the easier it will become and more uh, easier to remember all of the shortcuts that we've learned too. I will leave all of the shortcuts that we've been using in the description below and some extra information just to summarize what we've done today. So that's something you can uh, use if you want to print it out or whatever. Um, and I hope to see you next time.